All right, it's Real Medic, and I'm right back at it. We're on Orleans TV. I got a young Charlotte artist, uh, fresh out of uh, East Side, and I'm going to let him uh, introduce himself. So. Yo, I go by the name of Amir, um, like you said, from Charlotte. Shout out my boy Real for having me. Hey, hey, don't move too fast, you gon' lose me. So baby, chill with all that talking, you gon' confuse me. Them boys do the yapping, but me, I just do the poof. And I heard the Roy fast me, I need the one with two wings. I like the Barry brand, but I prefer the cop with two V. Shiny shit, pool piece, we eatin' dog a full feast. Got your brought them all up in the jaws, it's like I pulled teeth. For the lawn. Green face, I need each face crippin'. Eyes red like he stay lifted, but he stay gettin' it. Who line said that he ain't gifted? My mind said different. Who try and said that they are with us, the fuck is you kidding? My crew top four to fifth is one of our children. Then again, six through ten, been trying to get with us. These niggas ride dick and pop shit when they in they feelings. You want squad since the sidekicks and echo denims. Then I advise you keep your head on the swivel. Fuck the nigga, I'ma get you. Hey, it's ATK, look. I, I uh, know ATK or well, Amir for, I want to say about mm, five six years. Yeah. Now. Um, and I've been just like, I've seen them grow as an artist who came in. Even as like my homeboy, I've seen like them different shows and just different experiences that make them uh, stand out as artists. So we're just gonna get into uh, different things today. Today, so first question, um, bro. So you came into the game as Amir the King. What made the name change come about? Uh, that was something I always knew I was gonna do. Um, it was kind of just like a maturity thing, like getting to a point in my career where I felt like I, I was just ready to drop it, you know what I'm saying? It's really about uh, growth, ultimately, so that's what it was. Okay, so when it came about, did you feel like it was a different uh, chapter, like uh, with the different monikers that you go by? Uh, yeah, definitely um, a, a different... Uh, uh, a different way of doing things, a different like discipline. Like I said, growth, um, just just all around maturity as as a, a brand, a business, a person. So uh, I feel like everything grew from a uh, from the point like you said when you met me to now, and so it was just I felt like ready. You know what I'm saying? And what would you say like is a a core principle or value that you hold yourself to? Uh. Always stand true to yourself, uh, number one, and believing in, 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 in yourself and, and standing up for, not, not, I mean, like, just, just standing for the things that that you feel, you know what I'm saying, are close to your heart, going, going, going with what's natural to you, not, not with what other niggas is doing, not riding waves, you know what I'm saying, that's, that's number one, following, following you. Okay, so what made you initially start rapping? Uh, shit, family, family, my cousins, uh, they they was making music when I was real, real young, so that inspired me hearing hearing their music uh, on the CD on MP3. You know what I'm saying? That that's just that was crazy. To me. It was like my first my first favorite rappers, and, and obviously hearing everything that they was listening to and watching. Uh, they was putting me on shit like super early. I actually remember one of my cousins put me on Nicki and like I had to be first grade, uh, Nipsey, first grade, you feel me? Like these are people they was fucking with at daytime. And obviously, you know, like the Waynes, the Gucci's, the Webby, all these people. I was listening to all these people like super, super young. So just them exposing me to uh, all these different like avenues and in between that. And obviously, you know, my mom listening to music, everybody around you listening to music. So it was just something that always interested me. I know at a young age though, cause uh, yeah, yeah. So like, did you start like freestyling at a young age as well, or trying to do different things? Like, well, I was always uh, a writer, but uh, I used to even like, I used to just rap. Like even if it was like nursery rhymes and shit like that, I used to just rap. And I always just remember liking music, whether it was like Michael Jackson, or, like Erica Badu, Warren Hill, whoever. But my mom was playing. Or even in church, you know what I'm saying? Just the music. I always remember the music, like. So I always just gravitated to it. And like I said, I ended up when I heard them rapping, 
I was like, that's what I'm gonna do and from then. I, I can remember like we was in like a we had a rap group like kindergarten. It was me, my cousin, my brother and shit. Okay. And so that's when I was in like you know what I'm saying, I was in like kindergarten. everybody else was older than me, obviously. So but it was like a super young nigga, you know what I'm saying? So Okay. Man. So so my boy, I'm like I I know that you're also a good writer and did you think that also like played a good part in uh like help you be more artistic in your craft. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think reading, writing, learning help you be better uh, in your craft. Period. And in life, obviously, but it all go hand in hand. But the more you know, the more you can talk about. You know what I'm saying? The more you can uh, express to others. So definitely, uh, always consuming something, even if it's you're not a reader. You know what I'm saying? It's just some type of new content. Reading and watching, and obviously writing continuously helps you. Okay, so um, what part of your sound makes you distinct? Uh, I think I think what I say and how I say it is a distinction. Obviously, beat selection, uh, diversity. You know, I, I think I do a lot of things. Um, the way I put my, obviously, like my project, the way that that's put together, nothing I do, I don't think is in the same lane as, as anybody else. And I, you know what I'm saying? I, I pride myself in that. I think that stand out in itself. So. Okay. So walk us through the process of, of like, um, when you're making a song. Like, let's say we're in the studio with uh, Amir. He's about to make a new song. What are we about to uh, see happen? It differs. It differs on a on a day to day. It's really it's really not the same. Sometimes I might wake up out the bed and just write a song. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I might wake up, record a song. Sometimes I might pull up and it, it's like I'm listening to this beat and then I don't even finish it. You feel me? I, I got down. I do like a quarter song, leave it, come back, finish it. You know what I'm saying? In between that time, I do that and finish it. I could have wrote or freestyled another three, four songs. You feel me? Between that time, so it's like it, it, it always differs. But uh, what to me what's most important is staying active and just keeping yourself in the environments and like always knowing I I gotta I gotta put something down. Like, some I always have something to say. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, what's your top five? Uh, all time type shit. Yeah, like your top five favorite artists. Artists like no, not rappers. Just um, yeah. Let's go. Well, let's do rappers first. You feel me? Uh, rappers top five. I definitely say uh, Wayne, uh, Jay Z. Uh, this out of order as well. Uh, shit, I can put X up there. Uh, DMX. <laughs> be specific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shout out, shout out, bro, too. But nah, DMX. Uh, mm, all time. I might get those Kendrick up there all time. Uh, yeah, five. I, I want to say three stacks. Yeah, I say okay. three stacks. I say three stacks. Okay. If we talking about like favorite, like this is somebody I, I love to hear always. You feel me? I feel like all of these people, when they drop, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Even like to this day, I'm still like, I'm, I'm excited for them to uh, release music. So, yeah. yeah, I'll put them up there. Okay. So I'm like, no, no Cole, no Drake, no um, Kendrick Lamar. Oh yeah, future definitely could have made my yeah ah yeah future future up there. That's that's one of my favorites. Um, and Ye missed it too. Yeah, yeah, he was he was close. He was he was in there. I almost didn't put Kendrick in there. It'd be hard to narrow it down to five, but I'm just like I don't know. When you say that, future definitely could be in my top five. Like I I bless him just as long as as Kendrick, if not longer type shit. So I don't know. Future one of my you know what I'm saying honorable mention for sure. Uh, yeah. 
So do you think some of these artists have, uh, do you think some of these uh, same artists have similar influences like on your music? Uh, I think, like I, I was saying earlier, everything you consume, whether it be reading, writing, I think all of that uh, has something to do with your output. All of that affects uh, what you write, what you, you know what I'm saying, how you express yourself. So definitely everything I listen to. And then, and then obviously not just them, even music I don't like influences my music. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can get something out of just listening to a song one time or seeing something one time. So yes, most definitely. Um, what are some of the art, some other artists in the game that you can see yourself working with in the future? Well, obviously everybody I listen on my top five I would like to work with. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a lot of singers I would like to. Work with. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of people I would work with, bro. Uh, like a little baby, I was a little Uzi, I would like, I work with. Obviously, my nigga, my nigga Mitch, you know what I'm saying? I want to do some music with that nigga. He Hollywood. God damn. <laughs> God damn. Uh, it's a lot of people I want to work with, but I'll work with anybody. Shit. Gibbs, Travis, all these niggas on this table. Frank, definitely. Shit, Sizzle, goddamn. Uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody, bro. Everybody we grew up on, like, I, I fuck with, like, if you making good music, but I would like to make music with you. I feel like it's people I haven't even heard of uh, as well. Like, people that don't even, like, make vocal music, EDM. People that just deal with a lot of like low end sounds and things like that. Like I would like to work with them too. So you know what I'm saying. I'm definitely trying to cook up with everybody and just really create some shit. I feel you. Just tapping in with different sounds, almost like uh, when uh, artists do the different producers to get different beats, different even different ways for their thing. Facts. I wanna um like eventually, and I feel myself getting there. Just getting to a space where like I'm really, really creating and building. Like a certain sound. I feel like, I, I mean, obviously, every time I make music, I'm crafting the sound and, and things like that, but just being a little more hands on and like combining everything that I actually do like and listen to, you know what I'm saying, in the one, just pulling from everything and making me, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm ready to get there. That's what, that's what I'm on the way to. But uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what does Kill Switch mean to you? What does Kill Switch mean to me? Family, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, it's family, bro. And it's my, and it's my brothers, bro. Um, this, this whole, this whole, this whole shit really wouldn't be the same without them. And I think that's on everybody in. Uh, this shit, I don't know. We just, we building. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot right now. That this is, it's the surface. Like the music is, is really just the surface of it. So, I don't know. It's hard to think about. So, what's like what, when you ask me this? Because it's, it's like, it's, it's bigger than just even the four X. And then for niggas who don't know, it's uh, Messiah, Sko, Mavi, myself, Amir. Uh, and then, you know what I'm saying? A whole extended family as well that come with it on, on like many accords uh, fashion, you know what I'm saying? Uh, videography, uh, shit producing, like everything, bro. Like, we, we trying to tackle everything. So, it's shit, it's shit it, it, it get huge, bro. Like, when I think about that shit, like you said, uh, like like you asked, it's, it's family, it's uh, it's love, it's, 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 you know what I'm saying? Niggas walking in positivity, always uh, trying to be better. Like, iron sharp as iron, you know what I'm saying? Everybody striving for greatness. So when you look to the left and the right, it's like, damn, I can't even, I can't even slack for it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So. For sure. And it's all a part of a vision because I'm just like, uh, off camera, we just had different conversations where we were just speaking about like um, being able to put like our people in position. And I know that that is like an essential point for you. So when you see yourself, uh, everybody in position, what would you, uh, what would you say like that would look like for you? Uh uh everybody's just being able to do whatever they want to do um like i said whether that's if you want to stream video games you feel me if you want to do fashion you want to sell clothes you want to make music beats whatever you want to do do that shit freely uh even if you do choose to go and work for somebody 
Go do that shit if you want to, but don't feel like that's something I have to do. You know what I'm saying? Know that you have other options. You know what I'm saying? I just want everybody to, to be free. That's 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 what putting your people in position look like. And you as well. You know what I'm saying? And, and you have to do that with yourself. Like. So, yeah. Yes, sir. Um, I want to ask you this. Yeah. It's like how how you how you show someone what they mean. You know what I'm saying? This is how you express that. Whether that's being there for them. Some people is some people it is like monetary, <laughs> you feel me? However you express that someone mean what someone means to you and how much they mean uh, I think I said, you know what I'm saying, time and dedication. You know what I'm saying? That you that you're willing to put into something. That's that's a a, a language of love, you know what I'm saying, in itself as well. So Do you think love and loyalty go hand in hand? No. They don't. You can love <laughs> people love a lot of things. You feel me? It's hard for people to be loyal to some things that they love. You know what I'm saying? Be it being healthy, you know what I'm saying, eating right. Some people love all it's it's a lot of uh, things people love in a in a positive way, but they can't they can't be loyal to that because they're not you know what I'm saying, they might not be disciplined, you know what I'm saying, they might have a stronger love for other things. So it's um no, <laughs> they definitely don't go hand in hand. And you definitely you know what I'm saying, you see these things in, in human actions as well, you know what I'm saying? So it can love a person a lot. But love other things as well. Okay. So, do you think uh, when it comes to loyalty, right, is that a selfishness thing or is that somebody making a different decision? Like, you can, like you're making a dumb decision? Uh, loyalty is a conscious decision if that's what you're asking like like i definitely wouldn't say it's a dumb decision i wouldn't say it's about being selfish either it's just like like you said okay i know i i, I got love for this person i'm gonna choose you know what i'm saying to stand by them you know what i'm saying and, and I'm gonna hold it down. You feel me? Cause, and I say choose. Like, I don't want people to get that misconstrued. Mis I say choose because anybody can do what they want to do at any given moment. Nobody owe you nothing. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I don't feel like that about anybody. So that's why I feel like right, if you fuck with me, I understand it's mutual love. Like, cause you could, you could be funny. You could do whatever you want to do, and you don't owe me shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't really owe me no loyalty. I don't. I don't feel that. Like, like nobody really owe me that. So it's and vice versa. So if you are loyal, it's like a, it's a, it's a conscious decision. I'm money I'm walking with you. I fuck with you for for whatever reason. Hopefully it's out of love because on my end it tend to be, and so that's that's how I look at it. So is that for like your friendship and your relationship? I feel like that's everything. I feel like that's that's yeah, that's everything. A lot of them, a lot of them is the same. In a in a relationship, most times it should start off as a friendship. You know what I'm saying? That's just it. You build off of that, but even even that's a constant decision. A girl can like, bro, n niggas slide on women all the time. They got options like niggas got options, so they gotta say, all right, I'm about to fuck with this nigga. I'm choosing to fuck with this nigga. You feel me? The same way you say, all right, I'm choosing to fuck with y'all because I fuck with her. Like, I like her, so this is what I'm finna do. You know, they don't owe you that though. Y'all don't owe each other that at all. You know what I'm saying? To a certain extent, when y'all get in a certain years in, people feel like, oh yeah, you might owe, but nah, at the end of the day, nobody owe you nothing. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and if somebody want to move and feel like, all right, this is what I want to do with myself, like, you can do that. That's cool. But 
it's a conscious decision. You know what I'm saying? It's a conscious decision. You know what I'm saying? It's just express that shit. I got that. I feel like there's ways to handle that, but I'm saying nobody like to to spin it back to the loyalty shit. It's like for someone to move don't mean they wasn't loyal to you. It just might mean they want it different. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a conscious decision. Okay, so the reason I asked is because when I got my first tape on Timeless, I remember hitting you and I was like, bro, is this a love song? Is this a love album? So I wanna I wanna ask you like, what is the theme of Timeless? It's really about growth above all and, and not staying not staying in the same place. It, it, it do touch love. It do touch really to break it down. Every session is kind of like a different addiction, let's say, for, for lack of better words. Like it's like a different thing that that take your time, you know what I'm saying. And for the for the first one, it was like love, you know what I'm saying. And and it was showing both the positive and negative sides. It's just like, cause you see people get caught in these relationships where it's just like, you got down, you with somebody, and it's somehow, you know what I'm saying. We were young, so you see these things with people finding their way all the time. People are together and they get stuck with each other and they start they just keep fucking with each other you obviously not even that happy you feel me y'all need it's not even like positive for real but y'all fucking with each other say i was just gonna stay doing what y'all doing because okay this is what i'm comfortable with this is what i'm used to and i don't want to put myself out dolly you feel me you feel me uh evil that you know you feel me you feel me and so by the time you get to the place where you like all right i'm about to cut this person off because i'm ready to i'm ready to accept that this shit ain't good yeah Years done passed. You feel yeah. me? You done lost time. You can't get back. Yeah. Another thing I would like to say, I'm just like, I feel like. Well, I, well, yeah, I got I to gotta touch on the other side yeah, of the album yeah. as well, just because I don't leave it too blank. Yeah. Uh, just transcend that, that same concept about the love thing to, to money as well. And that's that's more the back end, like where, where you're working a job. You know what I'm saying? I see you see this as well. Even with, with me as a nigga that was. You know what I'm saying? Then nigga work, then everything. You know what I'm saying? Trying to trying to taste a dream type shit. But you uh you see people that are they working, you see people that's hustling, you see people really just doing whatever, trying to goddamn get their bag, chase whatever, but a lot of times you see them lose sight, you see them get comfortable, you see them grow complacent. And my scariest shit was, you know what I'm saying, we graduated after I uh left school, you know what I'm saying? Obviously I went back and work. I'm seeing niggas 30, 29, 27, you feel me? We working the same job, making the same wages. These niggas got kids and shit. Some of these niggas got degrees. You feel me? And they was like, yeah, yeah, I, was, I got out of college. I was just going to look for, I was doing this. I was going to hold this down till I got a job. It's been like two, three, four, five, you know what I'm saying? Years since these niggas been out of school. And it's like, just that. Well, you don't really notice how, how much time you lose. That shit was always scary to me. And then you you get out and you see these concepts in yourself, whether it may be, okay, I'm finna do this for a second till I get the bag, and then and then you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna spend my shit on this, and then my my other shit will be straight, and I keep investing like this, and then you still doing whatever you was doing, you feel me, for years, and then you let these things distract you, and they can take you away from your family, take you away from your passions, uh, things like that, you know what I'm saying? So just. That's that's what the album about, and it's really about the lack of time. That's why it's timeless. Like these things consume if you let them. So everything in moderation. That's that's what it's really about. Just growing and, and like not being afraid to to change and experience uh, new things. Wow, that was that was dope. Like that's that's what I really was impressed. Um, I would say an, another one of my favorite songs off the album was uh, 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. And I want to know, like, you feel me, what was like going through your head on that? Like, you spoke it real well on the track, but was it like, you feel me? Yeah. Like, uh, situation in particular? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like I said, that was one of them ones that uh, it was, uh, it took me a minute to like finish. I, I wrote that one in parts, like, it was the hook, and I think. You know what I'm saying? I had the hook for a second. Well, first of all, I had the beat for a second. I was just sitting on the melody. You know what I'm saying? Then I put the hook together. Then, goddamn, I, I got into the verse. And it was, 
I don't know, just inspired by like like I said that time, like I was just on the road a lot, uh, back and forth, in and out the city, alone a lot. You know what I'm saying, driving. And I, I just was trying to recreate that feeling of just being on the road, like what it, what it feel like when you under the stars, you know what I'm saying? And you really just thinking, you know what I'm saying? Niggas is really, I don't know. It, it was a different time. Like, like you hear civic freestyle shit like that, like niggas spent a lot of time just driving, uh, chasing, you know what I'm saying? Whatever I was looking for, trying to do shows, get some bread, anything. So just trying to recreate that feeling and driving through the city, like I was saying, east side, uh, the scenery of everything, that just inspired like the whole album, you know what I'm saying? So just trying to recreate that. So what's your favorite song about Probably to the casket. That's that's one of my favorites. That's that's the one I think is 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 one of my best. Like as a as a full song, uh, I like Two AM, um, Civic, obviously Language. That's that's one of I know that's gonna be like my favorite to perform. And um, it's it's hella, but the whole album is is crazy. I've been listening to these shits for like years as well, so it's like I, I kind of do all of them got like a different, you know, what I'm type of value. To me. Like I, really, I love them, you know what I'm saying? I hold them close to me already, so it's like hard to pick a favorite, but I, I love them all for different reasons. So, you know what I'm saying? I think you really get uh, your thing on the album. Another one would have been like uh, Wooden Change. Oh that yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout, that, shout, that, shout out Ruben. That's the anthem. You've been, you've been oh, yeah. hearing that for a minute. Facts, hold us down too. Yeah, yeah. That's one of my ones too. You know. Yes, sir. Um, so how do you feel about like the response that you've gotten from uh, the first album drop? Man, I I I'm blessed, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm appreciative of, of all the love and like I like I always say like. You know me for six years, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my first mixtape just turned five years old. Uh, so for this to be my first album and people still fucking with it and, and, and they like supporting me, maybe, you know what I'm saying, even harder if 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 not, yeah, they, they, they fuck with me harder now than they was before, you know what I'm saying? That shit is a blessing that, that people is just paying attention and that, you know what I'm saying, the work that I, the work that I done has, has paid off for itself. That feel, that feel good as well, cause, um, it's, it's a certain not knowing that going to this shit too, and so you never really know about how how any of this is gonna actually work out. You just got the confidence to to keep moving and try it. So to see to see that uh, people could relate to it and that they they felt the message that I was trying to give, you know what I'm saying, and that they got whatever they got out of it, I was appreciative of that. So, so um, numbers wise. Like, what's uh, your next goal? Like, how much more do you want to do on your next uh, project? Yeah, I ain't tripping, bro. I really don't. I told you, bro. I didn't like. I didn't even have a real numbers goal for this shit. Cause, yeah, I, I really didn't. I was surprised about everything. Honestly, dog. Like, like I say, bro. I'm blessed, bro. My sis. If we talking about like numbers and shit, my sis. In the pandemic, that's you know what I'm saying when they started rolling and shit. So I wasn't really expecting much. Like I said, it's been five years. I'm like, let's just see where this shit go. And you know what I'm saying. So I don't got no goal for the next one. I'm just trying to make a better album. Like I'm trying to make it sonically better than than the last shit. So that's all I'm really focused on. I think everything else should figure itself out. Um. When it comes to being uh, an independent artist, what are some other ways that you would like to put yourself out there to uh, different crowds? Hmm. That's a good question. Well, I want to I act. I want to I model more. Uh, I don't know. I want to do a lot of things, like hands-on. I'm, I'm really trying to learn, like I said, like just getting to, to different spaces. Uh, I might start fucking with, with hosts and some shit. Like, I don't know. It's, it's a lot of avenues. So I'm really open to anything as long as it's, 
Yeah, I'm open to anything, bro. If it's dope, I'm, I'm with it. So I'm really trying to just stay stay active and stay working in that space. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with work, bro. Okay, so in Jacksonville, Florida, some artists have had their music banned from clubs for rapping on, you feel me, uh, their dead opposition. And I just wanted to know how you felt about uh, that. Um, them getting their music done, that shit lame. I don't really be done. I don't really be done that. There's a lot of things that should be banned. It's not. So let them talk, you know what I'm saying, how they want to talk. But, like I said, I don't condone, I don't condone the promotion of, of, of none of that in the music, but that's you do. I ain't, you know what I'm saying, I ain't tripping over here, but. Is it, is it almost just like a, a freedom of speech type thing, like? Yeah, yeah, definitely, like, don't be trying to censor it. Right, like, I might not believe, and you feel me, I might not have the same belief as you, but I don't feel like you should be able to say that type of Cause it's like this. I don't fuck with them clan niggas if they can do rallies and shit. Facts. I can't shut that shit down. Let the young niggas talk. <laughs> like, it's the same shit. Like, I feel way more uncomfortable about them clan niggas uh, marching and tweeting and doing all kind of bullshit than yeah. that I feel about young niggas talking about shit that they actually did. Regardless of how bad the shit that they actually did is, that's what happened to them. Sure. Let them express that. I think that's, you know what I'm saying? It's just, <laughs> that shit weird. Uh, do you think that that will also play along with uh, group think, like group think within the music industry? Mm -hmm. uh, what? With like uh, because they're saying that some DJs are going into this now uh, with just like shutting it down in different clubs down there and uh, in different spaces too. Do some some DJs are stopping from the music that's that's mixing and people is there. Right. That's that's more. I can condone that more than the court trying to get it, cause that's that's within the court, and that's them saying, okay, this is something we're not gonna condone, so I'm not gonna play that. Music. That I don't got no problem. With. DJ can do what they want to do, the same way rappers say what they want to say. You don't gotta play shit. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's 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 a good way. That's a better way to deal with it. Versus, cause you know the problem. You know why these. You know why these. <laughs> you know why these niggas keep rapping about killing niggas, right? Cause they getting signed for it, you yeah. feel me? So if the DJ don't play that shit, then maybe they'll be like, okay, I can't get this shit on the radio. That's why, you know what I'm saying? That's a better, that's a better option. You know what I'm saying? But that's nothing. That's nothing we got that subject with the bag of water. Bro, so like, with the talent, with the talent and the products that you're putting out, of course, you feel me, the labels are gonna, you feel me, the offers are gonna start coming in. But I'm hearing sometimes when uh, artists are being brought into these labels, they're being like, they'll say, okay, they like the music, they like, like the sound, but they might want you to talk more about, like, you feel me, violence, more about, like, you feel me, make it more explicit type. You nigga tell me that I don't believe it. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, bro, I'm gonna be honest, bro. I'm, I'm a different type of dude, bro. And I think this, everybody that I fuck with, not only do we stand on principles like morality, if I'm fucking with a label nigga, I don't need you, bro. Niggas, we have things that we already building. So it's gonna, like I said, it's gonna be more of a partnership. It's gonna be a mutual thing. So you're not finna just have me doing what the fuck. Like, what I got is already gonna be built. You know what I'm saying? To the point that I got now, I haven't had no, no help from the label. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna continue to be that. It's only gonna get bigger and bigger. So we, 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 we dictate this shit, you know what I'm saying? We can tell the narrative, so. I don't know, I think that's a, uh, I do hear shit like that, but that's, um, that's unfortunate. I don't think, I think that, yeah, that's unfortunate. That's so, unfortunate. so do you think you're, you're looking for, it would be more of a, a distribution based type deal? It had to be a money right type deal. <laughs> I that. I definitely that. Yeah, that's the type of deal that have to be. That's that's really it. Um, okay. So have you ever experienced any difficult uh situations while you've been on road? Mm, I mean it was plenty of difficult situations because I was broke. 
<laughs> like, niggas just doing that shit with literally, you feel me, with, with, with whatever money I had. Like, fuck it. If I got to go, I got to go. So that shit, that shit bring different scenarios in itself as far as budgeting and whatever. You know what I'm saying? But as far as, like, I never been, I never been trying to myself like that, you know what I'm saying? Thank God, you know what I'm saying? I be moving love out here so you can get the same back. It'd be, it'd be good, it'd be good energy in the world always, but I mean, niggas is definitely, uh, <laughs> I've mean, been broke on the road, but nigga, like, that shit wouldn't fuck. I would say more of, like, you feel me, within, like, uh, more of, like, the promoter, especially, like, you feel me, like, 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 Um, what city have you, uh, what city has the best props? What you perform? Low key. Might be DC. Might be DC. What you think? Houston, but you ain't coming. I ain't coming, man. You feel me? I ain't been there. Oh, Houston, I know Houston's gonna be lit though. But for me right now, it might be DC. I think best crowd DC, but my favorite show so far might have been might have been New York shit. That might be my favorite like set. Yeah, uh, yeah, DC is crowd. And Charlotte, Charlotte be doing anything too. Charlotte be doing anything too. We uh, it's been a, it's been a little minute since I had like the show show out here, but they do their thing. They do their thing. So what's next? Listen, we do got the show March seventh. Uh, it's not about um. Deluxe coming soon for the album. And then, uh, of course, we're working on some, we're always working on something else. You know what I'm always working on something else. Videos, um, just content in general. Um, it's really, it. also, it's a couple shows next month, actually. So, so shows, videos, and Deluxe, next year. I'm working. Okay, so uh, the next visual. See what we see. <laughs> Alright, what well, shit? That's what it is, my boy. Alright, so, Amir, say no fuck, any last comments, my boy? Uh, shit, man. Appreciate you for having me. Tell me out now, man. Uh, yeah, Snow Harbor, March 7th, Kill Switch. You know what I'm saying? Shout out, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody that's supporting you, though, man. Love, man. The luck's coming soon. There you go. Real raw for you, Steve. Any kicky shotgun in the whip beside him, he will not run. Look inside his eye, he a rider, he a high boy. He been selling powder, feed his daughter, fuck his joke. Boy, that 9 to 5 will get you, Bobby Brody trying to shine. So he ride with his say, pulling up. What you want, do that fire with him, so you know he done. From the one to this my nigga, he gon' let it bust if he don't fuck with you. Survive, nigga, we can't play about money, but it's nothing, no one trying to get it. Told myself I got some gold with nothing. Target, the me just a target, the me just a target.